Hi friends, my name is Julene. Welcome back to my farm. I've been raising this flock of Katahdin hair sheep for about the last five years. And we started with just four and now we have about 65. And along the way, we've sure had our fair share of problems with parasites. We've lost a few and we've definitely had a lot that get sick and have to treat. When I talk about parasites, I mean what people commonly call worms. Parasites are the number one reason people lose sheep. When you hear people talk about why sheep are so hard to raise, parasites are the reason why. Sheep are very good at hiding any sign of disease. They are also very susceptible to internal parasites. Those can make them anemic, they can make them lose weight and give them chronic diarrhea, and they can ultimately kill them. And this is what puts a lot of sheep owners out of business or discourages a lot of people from continuing to raise sheep. So today we're gonna to talk about some of the strategies that we've used at this farm to try to prevent those problems in our herd. And then I'll talk about ways to identify those problems and treat them if you need to. So from the very beginning, trying to prevent those problems has been a major priority in raising these sheep. So we've really tried to selectively breed and only retain ewes that show parasite resistance. And by parasite resistance, I mean that they don't really get sick or show signs of disease from them. I do not mean that they are free of parasites. I believe there's really no such thing as a parasite free sheep. The idea is that they can carry a light load of those worms in their gut and not get sick from them. And that their immune systems are capable of controlling those numbers. So year after year when we're selecting which of these sheep we're gonna keep for breeding in the future, that is one of the major factors that we look for. So if they're sick a lot as a baby, they're probably gonna end up at the butcher at the end of the year instead of in our breeding program. This is Angie and she's a four-year-old ewe and she is basically the picture of health. She has a perfect coat, bright eyes, big belly, lots of muscle. She is absolutely gorgeous in my mind. Aren't you girl? There's her brother. Yeah, such a pretty girl. And that's Adam, that's our ram. When we talk about selective breeding for parasite resistance, you have to remember that your ram is 50% of your genetics. So it's really important to select a ram that does not have parasite issues. Last year, we added a ram from Greg Judy's flock. He raises St. Croix, which is a different breed for us, but also a breed of hair sheep, not too different from the Katahdin. So we got Doctor here as our secondary ram, and his purpose here is to bring those parasite resistant genetics into our flock. So we have Adam who has been super healthy and brings a lot of muscle and weight to our babies. And then we have Doctor who's gonna bring those healthy parasite resistant genes to our babies. Right, buddy? He's so handsome. Good boy. Doctor's only about a year old, but he's starting to fill out really nicely. Another major step that we take to try to prevent parasite problems in our herd is we rotationally graze. And I have a whole video dedicated to this, but basically what we're doing is giving them small paddocks or areas of grassy pasture that they're allowed to graze for one to two days. And then we move them on to fresh grass. Now sheep poop out or shed worm eggs in their feces. And then other sheep come along behind them and they eat on that same ground and that's how they ingest the worm eggs and develop a population in their gut. So if you're constantly moving them to fresh grass where they haven't pooped yet, you're just really lowering that exposure level to those worm eggs. But if you keep them on the same piece of land and their manure builds up, you can imagine there'd just be hundreds of millions of worm eggs all around them. And at a certain point, they just can't help ingesting them. Also, parasites mainly reside in the bottom four inches of grass. So if you just don't allow your animals to graze it down so low, also you're gonna lower your exposure levels. Another preventative measure that we take with our flock is that we schedule our breeding so that most of our babies are born in the winter. The parasites that we're concerned about tend to thrive in those wet, warm conditions. 
like the humid, hot North Carolina summers. But in the winter, when it's drier and colder, there tend to be less worm eggs in the environment. So you're lowering that exposure risk to your very young lambs and your ewes that have just given birth. And then the last thing that we do to help prevent these problems is just keep a really close eye on this herd. Close, careful observation of your animals is the best way to know what's normal for them. And once you know what's normal, you can identify abnormal. Like I said before, sheep are really good at hiding the signs of disease. Those signs are gonna be really subtle. Now, in my experience, most of the time, once a sheep reaches adulthood, which is over a year old. If they haven't had problems yet, they're probably gonna be okay. Their immune system has probably learned to deal with the parasites that they encounter, and you can bet on them being pretty healthy throughout their lifetime until they get really old. Just like humans, when we become senior citizens, our immune systems don't function as well, and that's when you can start to see parasite problems popping up again. But for the most part, we are watching our lambs, especially anybody under six months old. Another period in these animals' life that you need to be a little more vigilant about worm infestations is in your ewes right after they lamb. It's pretty common for their immune system to be somewhat depressed in the first few days following giving birth. Now, a healthy sheep is gonna have a nice big belly they're going to be an aggressive eater, and you're going to see them chewing their cud. An animal that is unhealthy or maybe dealing with some parasite issues may at first just seem a little less thrifty than some of the others. Maybe they don't fill their belly up as much. Maybe they're not out grazing when the others are. And when they're laying down, you may not see them chewing their cud as often as you would like. Their sides may be sunken in, despite there being plenty of food available and they may have an unthrifty appearance to their coat. In hair sheep, this can be a little bit of a deceiving sign because they do go through a shedding period where they all sort of look a little crappy. But if the rest of the animals in your herd all have shiny sleek coats and one of them looks a little scruffy, that can be a bad sign. You also wanna be looking at the animal's behavior and anything that stands out as abnormal behavior is usually a sign that that animal doesn't feel so good. And again, this can be really, really subtle. In our herd, it typically means that the animal stands a little bit away from the others in the flock. They may be some of the last ones to move when we're rotating them from pasture to pasture. They'll be at the back of the pack. They may even have an unsteady gait or be a little bit stumbly when they're trying to run along with the flock. But the biggest behavioral difference that we will see is their unwillingness to eat. Now, most of the time, my sheep are pretty aggressive eaters. When I first put them on fresh grass, they are running around trying to munch the best things first. And so if you see an animal not doing that, just kind of lazily picking around or not grazing at all, that's a really bad sign. We also give these guys a little bit of spent brewer's grain once or twice a day. And again, they will very aggressively attack that food if they're feeling good. And if they're standing back or refusing to eat that grain at all, again, I know that's an animal that I need to check further. You also wanna be looking at your animal's poop all the time. I frequently walk around their paddocks and look at the feces on the ground. If any of it's looking runny or clumping together, if it's not indistinct pellets, then I know that there's probably an issue. Now in my herd, we rotate through a lot of different areas and so the grasses and the vegetation is different pretty much every day for these guys. And sometimes there's plants that can give them a little bit of indigestion or diarrhea. So if an animal has a little bit of off feces for one or two days, I don't worry about it too much, especially if that animal is healthy overall. But if it's an animal that's struggling and they constantly have a dirty butt or runny diarrhea, you really need to be concerned. As the stages of disease progress, you may start to see some more overt signs. That animal may start to lose weight or fall behind in growth compared with others of a similar age. They may have a hunched body appearance. Also sometimes drooping ears or a tucked tail can be a sign of illness. And if they're just hanging their head looking depressed, then that's also a really good reason to check that animal. One of the more obvious parasites that you can actually spot 
in the feces are tapeworms. And those are gonna look like little grains of rice and they might be wriggling. And those are pretty much the only actual worms that you're gonna see with the naked eye. Most of the time what animals are shedding in their feces are the microscopic worm eggs. And you're just not gonna detect those by looking at it. Now, because parasite infestations can be so devastating to your sheep, in the past, it was thought that the best practice would be just to blanket deworm or give a dewormer to every single animal in your herd every month of the year. And as you might imagine, all that has done is created parasites that are resistant to the drugs that we have available to us. And we have generations of sheep that have been bred with no immunity to those parasites. So the thinking has changed on that front. Today, most experts would recommend that you only treat the animals that are carrying a high enough worm load detected by fecal examination on a microscope or that they are showing signs of disease. And so that's what we do on this farm. Now, understandably, a lot of people are against the use of chemical dewormers. We are raising these animals for meat and a lot of people would rather that the animals that they eat have never consumed any of those chemical dewormers. But for us, it's more important to preserve the lives of the animals that we have been entrusted with. So if there is a drug that will keep them alive, I'm gonna use it. So we do use those chemical dewormers, but only when we absolutely need to. And we make absolutely sure that we stick to the withdrawal times on those. So each of those drugs is gonna have a timeline that the manufacturer will give you so you know how long you have to wait after dosing the animal before you can consume the meat or the milk from that animal. Now there are herbal dewormers on the market. I don't have any personal experience with those. I have heard that if you use them diligently and give them to every single animal every month that they do prevent parasites. But again, I don't know that to be true. And while I see how that could work in a very small scale flock. Once re you reach a flock the size of ours, that's really not practical anymore. Especially considering that we don't have any kind of chute or handling system on this farm. Those run anywhere from $5,000 to $20,000 and we just haven't made that much money with this flock to justify that kind of expense. But what we do do is give them a little bit of spent brewer's grain once or twice a day and that puts them in a position where we can catch them easily. So if I'm concerned about anybody, I put a little bit of food down that attracts the animal to me. And then I just grab them quickly and check when I need to check. And we're gonna show you the kind of things that we look for when we do that. So you can see how they kind of lose their fear of us when we have grain. They all come up and they all fight to eat as much as they can. So what I do is walk around and look for anybody that looks a little bit unthrifty. Now we have a guy here that, well, he looks kind of chunky. I know he's been struggling with parasites. Hi, little buddy. And speaking of genetics in these guys, I actually traded for this lamb. There was a ewe that I needed to get rid of because she was jumping fences. And this was not my best decision. When we went to get him, I saw that his dad was actually suffering from a pretty bad parasite infestation. So genetically, I knew that he probably was not gonna have good immunity. And we've struggled with this guy. We're deworming him. And you can see he's got, it's not super obvious right now, but he's got this loose skin under his jaw. Now there used to be a fluid pocket or edema there, and that's referred to as bottle jaw. And that is a sign of severe anemia. And that's a sign that your animal probably doesn't have long to live unless you get them treated effectively. You can see this guy has really not shed his coat and it's kind of scruffy and dirty and matted. Now that can be genetic and sometimes they grow out of that, but it can also be a sign that they're just not that healthy. The biggest thing that we're checking when we grab these guys is what's called the FAMACHA score. So you're looking at the underside of their eyelid. So I normally just kind of put a finger on the top of their head and I use my thumb to pull the bottom eyelid down or roll it out. And you can see that's pretty pale. It's pretty close to white. That means that this guy is anemic and 
he was actually just dewormed yesterday so he's definitely a case that we're keeping an eye on you can let him go and let him eat that's what you get when you don't breed for parasite resistance now this is one of our oldest sheep her name is daphne and she's been very healthy really until this past year she had some mastitis last year and since then i think that just taxed her immune system a lot and she's also had some parasite issues really for the first time since we've owned her we're gonna go ahead and check her famacha score as well easy girl it really helps to have somebody hold the sheep for you let's see yeah and she's looking pretty pale again i have dewormed her not too long ago but we're probably going to go ahead and do her again the parasites that cause anemia are typically barber pole or blood sucking lice and in sheep if you don't see a problem with their coat where they're scratching or itching themselves a lot then it's probably barber pole that's causing that now this is angie again she's the one i pointed out as my picture of health you can see how strong she is this is a uh, something we gauge when we grab them if they're really hard to hold they're probably pretty healthy I'm gonna try and check her famacha for us here. Okay, so she's pink. You can see the blood vessels running in that lower eyelid. Nothing I need to worry about, especially because she's so healthy otherwise. This is one of our ewe lambs from this year. Her name's Eileen. We also call her Horns because she grew some horns. Now she is very, very strong and feisty. So I would expect her famacha score to be high. Let's take a look. Yeah, she's pretty red in there. You can see good blood flow in that inner eyelid. So that's a very healthy sheep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is another lamb that's had some parasite issues. You can see he is much skinnier than anybody else in the flock. But he is actually putting on weight again. He had some diarrhea. I had some trouble getting under control, but he's actually doing much better now. So when I see that really pale inner eyelid, I know that that animal needs to be dewormed and most likely for barber pole because of the anemia. So I go ahead and just do that right away. And that's just because I have so much experience with these sheep. I know that it is better to treat rather than wait. But in most cases, you're not gonna really be able to identify the species of parasite by just looking at the animal or their feces with the naked eye. You're actually gonna need to collect a fecal sample and take it to the microscope and evaluate the species of worm eggs on that slide. Only through identifying that species will you be able to choose the right dewormer for your animal. You really don't want to just throw the kitchen sink or any general dewormer into your animal. You really want to pick the one that is going to target the infestation that they have. And I like to refer to the wormx.info website for a lot of this information. I also look at some vet school websites, specifically Cornell, for uh, some off-label dosing information. Then it is also good when you check on that animal in seven to 10 days to collect a second fecal sample and actually do another worm count on that sample and make sure that the numbers have gone down sufficiently. And if you don't wanna to go to the trouble of buying a microscope and doing those fecal exams yourself, you can always take it to your local veterinarian. Every vet I've ever heard of will do a fecal exam for their clients. And it's typically 10 to $20. You don't need to bring your animal there. You just need to bring them a small, fresh sample of poop. And if you can't get it to them right away, stick it in your fridge. It's good for about 24 hours. Just in case I do need to deworm one of my sheep, there are four main medications that I keep on hand. These include Valbazin, which is considered a white wormer and is in the same class as Safeguard or Panicure. This is my go-to for tapeworms. I also keep Ivermectin. I use the 1% injectable solution. If they have external parasites like lice or mites, I will inject it under the skin, but I typically use it as an oral dewormer for stomach worms and I like to use Valbazin and Ivermectin in combination. And then I also use Levimisole, commonly sold under the brand name Prohibit, and this is considered a drug of last resort. It's also the most effective against barber pole worms, and barber pole are the ones that are gonna make your animals anemic, so those are the ones that are gonna be really deadly to your animals if they get out of hand. 
Typically, if an animal is showing signs of anemia, that's the one I actually go to first. We've also had some issues with coccidia, which is really a protozoa. It can often cause really bad runny diarrhea in sheep and often affects very young animals. And there are a couple of drugs that you can use for that. The sulfamids or Elbon uh, or Corid are all effective. We like to use this one and we just started using it this year and we've had really good luck with it. And then with most of these dewormers, they will require a follow-up dose or at least a follow-up checkup on that animal at about seven to 10 days. Typically, if I do need to deworm one of these animals, I will also offer them some supportive care. And by that, I mean some vitamin supplements such as B vitamin injections or an oral supplement like Nutri Drench or Power Punch. And if they're really anemic, I might give them some red cell or some liquid chlorophyll to help recover faster. So that wraps it up for today, guys. That's how we prevent and treat parasites in our sheep flock. If you'd like to see a more detailed video about how we do those fecal examinations on the microscope, you can check out this video right here. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.